Welcome to A Life in Film. Support us on Patreon to get early access to episodes, follow us on TikTok, and if you enjoy the episode, please like and subscribe. And if you have enough time, please write a review. It makes a huge difference. Thank you. Our guest today had a strong start taking on the lead in Edward II, followed by a supporting role alongside Daniel Day-Lewis, Michael Mann's The Last of the Mohicans. He's had a long and varied career working with Tim Burton on Sleepy Hollow, The Imitation Game with Benedict Cumberbatch, A Little Chaos with Kate Winslet, and his many TV credits include The Tudors and Jamestown. On the 11th of February, he will be seen on big screens everywhere alongside Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg in the Hollywood blockbuster Uncharted. Our guest today is Stephen Waddington. It's a life and fail. 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 There we go, boys. We're ready. Hopefully that's right. Because I've lost I've lost podcasts in the past. It's just gone. <laughs> Like, you, uh, you've it's recorded it and you've totally yeah. lost them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one oh, with yeah. Scorsese's just gone forever now. You just yeah, had to go yeah, back. Gone. You, got him. you, you had him for half an hour and then okay. he was just like, <laughs> said all nice things about you and everything and then he's deleted. That's like, that's sort of like that girlfriend that everyone had at camp when they were younger. They're like, no, she goes to a different school. Does she? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't know her. I really? think yeah, it's just, I just think it's yeah. something you say, Elliot, and if it's a shit podcast, you just wipe it and you say, sorry, <laughs> see what happened, I told you. That's it. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, take my eyes, but don't let that podcast have gone. That's, that was the best one. No. Oh. No, unfortunately, the first time it happened was with um, Amanda Abington, and she's lovely, and she was like, we'll do it again, and we recorded it. We did it again like a week no. later. And um, That was very convincing. It didn't seem that at all. Well, weirdly, the first half is the original recording. And then for right. some reason, something fucked up. Then we had to record the second half again. But the downside was in the first recording, she'd like, at the end, she was like, you're so talented. You don't really big me up. I'm like, this is fucking great. Yeah, keep it coming. Keep that in the edit. And then in the, the second time we did it, it was like, can you just can you just do all that again? All that praise yeah. that you did. <laughs> oh, don't force it don't force it uh, no i didn't ask i obviously yeah. didn't ask i was like for <laughs> fuck's sake but um yeah all good boys it's good to see your faces it's been a long time for both yeah, it has been a long time how long has it been i can't even work it out is it eight years or something like that we filmed in 2000 the summer of 2015 oh so six years so six years yeah six nearly yeah. seven yeah. not eight years yeah. god don't do that oh, you know, come on <laughs> It's good to see you guys. You're all grown up as well. You, I mean, obviously, you look a little bit yeah. more mature. You, you're like grown ups. You, you were really youthful the last time I saw you. Not that you're not anymore, but yeah. Not, it's like, yeah, yeah, just keep, keep, <laughs> keep, yeah, keep, 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 I was your age when we filmed Beautiful Devils. How old are you? Like, and so now I'm now <laughs> older than Elliot was when we filmed Devils. And I was only 22 when we filmed that. Yeah, so right. it was like, that is just wild. That's Absolutely crazy, wild. Time so before we get into it, guys, what have you guys been up to? Obviously this, there's been a pandemic. You've, you've engineered this, which is fantastic. How's this going? How did it come um, up? Mate, it's, um, it was, yeah, it was out of boredom and it was out of kind of frustration and, not getting auditions, not getting any jobs, and just thought, got to do something. I mean, Matt's done a similar thing, haven't you? You've been doing your YouTube um, videos as well, and like TikToks. <laughs> yeah, they're nowhere near as structured and they're as good as this. This is this is actually worth listening to. Mine is just the ramblings of two fucking idiots, if I'm being honest with you. With zip, it is literally called the Lack of Focus podcast. Whereas, um, oh, a little plug there. Um, oh, no, oh. this is this is actually has this has guests on people of of note who have achieved something with their lives. Mine is just literally a a guestless pit of nothing. Uh, but give it a watch; it's it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'll check. <laughs> get, get me on the campaign trail, <laughs> mate. No, I love it. I think it's great because it's kind of just like I mean, a lot of people probably watch that and think that is you. Like you know what I mean? The, that, yeah, that is no, literally you, which I think is funny, man. Yeah. I think that's what's yeah, good. That's I, I also think yeah. it's a great way to express yourself. You know, I've done the similar sort of thing through yeah. Instagram. And I really do want to get a YouTube channel. Maybe, maybe mm. a podcast, but I've always thought of a YouTube channel, you know, where you can do things like this, but just be a little bit bonkers, a little bit silly. 
But I think it's it's, yeah. it's antidote to the to the acting thing, is it? Where you kind of have to be a little be, you kind of have to fall in line in a way to 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 kind of um, maybe get yourself the part or whatever it be. Whereas mm. when you've got your own channel, you can actually do what you want. Right? So I love the control mm. all these things are giving people. You know, that's a real. That's, yeah, it's so true. That's a real change. I know if you've been picking up your um your videos, it's cracking me out the ones where you're playing the little instruments. <laughs> I mean, it's bonkers, isn't it? But it's great. You know, you have a great night out, you do a great video, you come back, you know, and you come back and you think of something else. But it's also a way of, like, not doing Hamlet. Do you know what I mean? Of not doing the serious aspect of the acting thing. Or That's the thing, yeah, because I, whenever I see Steve in, so since since we filmed together, I see you in everything. You're just, you're like, you, 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 you are, but you're always playing a, a, it, it's never the, the, the court gesture it's never the fun loving chat so like for, for example when you're in um in the tudors and um you just you know whereas i suppose if you have your own youtube channel your instagrams you can do the stuff where you're just like by the way mate i am a bit of a i'm i'm, I'm a laugh as well to, to like i can i can be jovial but maybe that's not the thing that gets you, gets you, know you on the set exactly because of, you know I think it kind of, uh, it's interesting how your career kicks off and mine kicked off in quite a serious way. I played Edward II and then I was in Last of the Mohicans and there were serious characters. So I became a sort of serious actor and a certain thing was almost expected of me in auditions and in the kind of roles that I would be chosen for or being into, in, introduced to. Uh, whereas I never had that, that outlet where I could go, yeah, but I'm actually a little bit bonkers and I want to I want to hone my comedy skills because you can't really get in a comedy if you're in serious films people it takes a long yeah. time for people to make that leap or you have to do something to engineer the bridge yeah. you see what I mean yeah yeah sure, yeah man can I say as well that is what a start <laughs> I mean that is crazy you're literally your first film well your second film was Last of the Mohicans and you know working with Michael Mann that's I mean you know there are strong starts I mean, that's not bad. <laughs> how, how was that? Or like, like, you mean just kind of jumping in at the deep end? It's well, you know, before that, I did when when I came out of drama school. You, let me tell you a story about drama school. We literally got together. The students said, "What would you, what are you expecting from your career?" You know, and and I distinctly remember saying I wanted to be in the Royal Shakespeare Company. Um, I want to uh, be a lead in a film, and I want to make a Hollywood movie. And literally. That happened in three stages. I, I got into the RSC, which I dreamt about, you know, straight away. Um, then I played Edward II, which was a lead in a British film. And then, then I went to America and did uh, Last of the Mohicans. It's all fucking down after that, of course, because how do you do that? <laughs> but also, mentally, I kind of achieved what I thought I was going to achieve over a span of 50 years or something like that. So that was a bit of a mindfuck, in a, in a way. But absolutely beautiful, obviously. It was fantastic. Being at the RSC was a great ground in watching really good actors and learning from them for a year or a year and a half and then uh being thrown in the deep end as you say with edward the second where you just have to literally go for it you know you can't second guess yourself you have to just do it um and the more things you know the same thing daniel day lewis is there you're playing opposite him and <laughs> scary scary if you think about it scary stuff so you you kind of got to jump in haven't you that, that's the only way really 100 percent. how old were you that, at, the, at that point i was 23 so you would have been <laughs> I'm trying to work out what Elliot would have said. Now you should have. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I've <laughs> wrinkle in his mother's out, eye. Try and work out by your age where you should be at that particular time. But yeah, I was 23, so I was, I was young. Yeah, I was young. Uh, man, really, was really, man. really young. That's really young to be on those to be at that sort of level. That's madness. I was, yeah, I mean, that's I remember in the audition room, the um, I was with Michael Mann. I was reading it, and I saw that the character was supposed to be 28. And I thought it really mattered then. I thought, oh, he's not going to give me the part because I'm 23. And I didn't want to tell him how old I was. You know, when he asked me, I was like, I'm 23. But people say I look older. <laughs> I was, <Yeah. laughs> you can play 28. You know what I mean? As if, as if it was a massive issue. And obviously, it's not really yeah. about if you're in the age range and you're right for the part. Yeah. I, I feel like you're one of these yeah. guys that's always looked how you look right now because I remember watching The Parole Officer as a kid, loved that film, and I feel like you haven't aged a day, and that's got to be like what twenty that years. So ago? sweet, that is so sweet. Do you know? Do you know what the secret is to that? Start out fat and ginger, and then you can't go wrong. So twenty <laughs> years down the line, because you look exactly the same. Yeah, because I started off fat. You can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's my that's my secret. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I suppose I haven't. But I mean, recently I can see, obviously, you, you change and you get older. But I, I guess it depends on the kind of roles you play as well. I guess I play the same kind of roles. And a lot of soldiers, 
and uh, a little bit of comedy here and there. I'd love to do more comedy. Um, a lot of it's out of your hands, though, isn't it? It's whatever happens, the way it takes you, you know? And how, I mean, obviously, that was a really strong start. And as you say, that was a little bit of a kind of mind fuck in a way. What was that like after that? I mean, obviously, you still, I mean, looking at your CV, you still worked consistently and everything else. But you did start at the top of the mountain. And the only way from there is down. Like, how did you, from that point on, kind of then get, I guess, what a lot of people get straight out of drama school. They're like, oh, this isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, um, I think you. I think what I what I was lacking was um, any kind. Of, I don't come from an acting family, so I didn't really I didn't really know what to do with it, and I didn't know how to guide where I had, I had got to, if that makes any sense. People say you should have gone to America, and you should. I, I just really didn't want to at that point. You know, I'm not. I'm open to going to America. I went for a little bit, but I I didn't really take people's advice, which was go to America now and get more auditions. Maybe I should. I don't know, but. But maybe it's happened in a good way for me. I never really set out to be famous either. That's one of the things I was, I've always been massively dedicated as an actor, but um, I wanted to be a good actor. You know, that, that, was, the, that was what I was aiming for. And, um, and having those amazing roles was, was, was fantastic. And after that, it kind of, I guess it faded. After that, I did a Ridley Scott film, but it didn't do that well. You know, I was playing Gerard Depardieu's brother. Then I played a lead in a BBC One drama. And, and I guess, the height of Last of the Mohicans is very difficult to get back up to. So I guess from uh, that kind of perspective, it's a little bit like you're failing in, in a sense. I think I never felt that. And, um, and I've had some great roles and worked with some great directors ever since, but I've not done what, what people expect once you're in that kind of movie. And it was a different industry then as well. You know, I think I, but I just didn't know how to navigate that. I just didn't know what I was doing really. I was just busking all the way through. Mm, that's a lot of that age as well. That's, I mean, it's very young to keep your head and... Yeah, exactly. No else. one talks about the idea that you've got to, like, have have the idea of, like, career management sorted out by that as age. Like, it's like, nowadays, if you compare it to footballers, you've got these these genius young stars breaking through at World Cups or whatever, and then they're just sort of... But now they're so carefully managed. But if they... If, like, Mbappe doesn't go on to become the best player of all time, he'll be seen as a failure. Do you know what I mean? And that's quite similar with people who blow up on the scene... Timothy Chamlet, for example, if he's not winning Oscars for 20 years, people will go, do you remember the has-been? Timmy, Timmy or Shane. And no one will remember these last six years of being an absolute juggernaut that he has been if he doesn't continue it. And that is a shame because by no stretch of the imagination, like I think Elliot and I both, I can speak for Elliot, I think we both look up to your careers in the sense of like, like even a role for you, which I imagine you don't probably hark on about yourself but like you in the imitation game is so brilliantly played and integral and a really cool movie to be a part of but you may not even register that as like a career highlight but for me that would be like well if it's, I could it's, do that with my career very, those sort of roles it's a very phenomenal. beautiful film I hear what you're saying and um yeah and it's all from a personal perspective as well isn't it but, but I understand about what you're saying about management and I I just assume now that you guys have that kind of management. You guys have someone you can speak to and guide you through these things. And has it not all changed? I mean, it seems like everyone's far less um, green than I was, put it that way. But um, I just assumed that like the footballers, you guys have this, this amazing career guidance. Is that not the case? I don't even have a career, Elliot. What do you <laughs> No, I'm, I'm glad that's the illusion that we give up. <laughs> that's, that's perfect because that's what we're trying to achieve. <laughs> yes, we we're working consistently. Um, Stephen. Um, I, no, I, I do think it's. I think it's changed. I mean, even since when I started, I started 13, 14 years ago, and just the process of auditioning and you know the people that you're going up against, the numbers of people you're going up against, the fact that everything's on tape now. Really, it's kind of it's a completely different landscape and. And one of the things that I really, you know, it's nice to have people on here and talk about how they got to where they are, because people coming into it now have no idea of what to do. And I, I would have no idea. It's changed so much. Um, and it really is. I, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, it's going to continue changing. And I mean, I mean in a good way, I think um, obviously there's more versatility now that people are, you know, they're getting what's the this is a terrible, terrible reference because I won't remember his name, but um. Did you see the film with Tom Hanks, um, the with the pirates? Um, yeah, when he goes, look, look at me, look at me. I am the captain now. I am the captain. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. People I'm like that. This guy. Who, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's now gone on. <laughs> I'm going to have to find out this guy's name and like, stick it in. 
Um, sure. You know, they're, they're kind of more open to casting people off the street and casting all kinds of breaths of people from no matter what, like if it makes a good film. So like, I don't know, things have changed. And I mean, how for you, for Steve, like, have you, have you felt like it's been a positive change? Have I mean, the landscape must have, it must be completely different now to when you I guess, Yeah, the, the landscape is totally different. Um, and I embrace those changes. It's evolution, isn't it? And you have to, or you become a dinosaur and all that. And, um, it, it seems to me that the changes are there's more freedom for younger people. And, and what I mean by that, and I guess what I sort of meant by assuming that there was some kind of more uh, micromanaging and things is that you seem more in control because you have outlets like the one that we're on right now or Instagram or whatever it be. It feels like we didn't have anything other than an audition that you went before IMDb came out. You know, you, you just you just had to guess what people might have been on or assume, or you might have actually seen them in something. It was a completely sort of a completely different world. A lot of your work was invisible, if you know what I mean. Um, whereas now everything seems very evident. People seem very positive. It seems like they have a plan. This is how it feels when you talk to younger actors. They feel like, you know, people have ambition and they have ideas about where what, where they want to be, etc. But it seems like they have a, a, an agenda and a plan to get there, not necessarily a, a horrible, ambitious one, but a, a truthful, honest, I want to achieve this, I want to do this. And going to America now for um, people in your age bracket is nothing. It's like people, they, they go every year, whereas it was a big thing to go to America back in the day. So I see loads of changes. I see changes with auditions and self-tapes. And I welcome that. You know, I think um, some of those auditions can be really rushed and you can be so nervous and you might have six lines of six pages of dialogue or whatever to learn. And that it can become about, have I learned the lines rather than what am I actually trying to portray here? What do I, you know, what am I? Absolutely. I, I do that so often, you know, I go, oh, I nailed the lines and I come out and go, I didn't make a mistake. And, and actually I haven't really interpreted, I haven't been given a chance actually to give, you know, give me, give me three pages. Uh, Cause you might have two auditions in the world. So that's, that's 12 pages. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure that's been considered. Yeah. That might be changing now. It's not meant. With self yeah. a little bit more control, isn't there, at home? Yeah, I mean, I think with the with the the idea of it being a memory test, I recently, the last, just just before COVID, went in for a role that I was really excited about, and the exact same thing. I thought, oh, got every single line right, every beat was perfect, and I thought, actually, if I if that was a self tape at home, so what I do with my self tapes is I obsess and I go, I'll do another one, I'll do another one, I'll do another one. I can do another one because no one's stopping me now. You know what I mean? And actually, actually, the adrenaline of the of being in the room sometimes really, really helped me. And that being like, well, this is it. This is your one moment, hit or die. You're in, you're out, bomb. Like Elliot is, you do, he, he does mad things in audition sometimes. And it's sort of, you shit the bed a few times with, with big cast directors. But like, I've always admired that about you, El, because you're such a fucking risk taker, bro. And it's really, really, really cool. So whenever I think to myself- yeah, Give me some examples. What are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> El, do the one with the, about the, uh, the, rogue, the Rogue One story. The Rogue One oh, one. Oh, yeah. Um, this, was, yes. this was a calamity. <laughs> no, but the thing was like, it's like all in, mate. All in. And I've kind of learned since, you know, to actually maybe not go quite so far. Like there were- uh, it's not going to make me look great, but I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. The one, yeah, the Star Wars one when they were doing, was it right? I think, was it Rogue One? It was, it, no, it was a Han Solo story, sorry. Oh, it was Han Solo, yeah. I was going in for Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to get that. Um, lottery win. Um, so I went in for that, and I mean, I, I just remember thinking, a balls to the wall. Like, I'm not going to get this because they're going to cast a name. So I've got to stand out big time there's no point in kind of just you know fading into the background so they had this setup where it was basically a desk with a load of things on it to play with pencils like bits of paper like a toy like mugs or whatever and she sat me down she's like right okay and we obviously weren't reading from the actual script and she was like okay just um this table's for you to like interact with to play with <laughs> do whatever you want in the room, like experiment. Right? And I was thinking, okay, cool. What can I do that's going to kind of, you know, stand out? So we're doing the scene. It's meant to be quite a flirty scene. Um, and she she's reading the lines with me and I, we're doing this thing and I, we did one take and it was all right. And and then I was kind of like, well, what can I, I mean, this scene's a bit weird. What, how can I use these things on the table? And I was like, nah, fuck the table. I'm just going to like, 
halfway through the scene, I basically stood up, sat on the table, slid across it, and then sat in the casting director's lap and, <laughs> and started playing with her necklace. Right. And I was, I was literally like, like, like this, like <laughs> playing in her lap. And I just thought, this is bold. And it's the last take, fuck it. And she started laughing and seemed to like kind of appreciate the boldness of it. And I obviously didn't get that role. But then she called me back in for another film that she was casting the next week, which was a smaller, low budget movie, um, which I didn't get either. But <laughs> it just shows you like sometimes maybe that was a bit too far and it was just happened to be the right person in that situation, because I think you could have done that with someone else and it might not have worked out. But I don't um, think it was too far because she she laughed, you know, she went with it. She, it yeah, that's a good point, yeah. If, yeah. if you if you get a positive reaction, then you're going the right way and she knows that you're really going for it. And sometimes you have to, I understand. So many of those auditions now you go for and you think, I'm just not going to get this. And you know it's going to go to a massive star. And I, and I still haven't worked out the, the, the logic of that, why that even happens, you know, whether it's a rotor that they have to fulfill. But you know you're part of mm. that. You're effectively being used as part of that. And you know you have no chance. I mean, that's really dispiriting because, again, you have to learn six lines a yeah. day. Six yeah. pages. That's but well, on, the tape as well. Did, did you actually do anything crazy and get anything? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Good, oh, no, actually, no. There was um, uh, a film I did a few years back called We the Kings, which um, I, I was completely wrong for. It was not, I was playing completely against type. But I went in, it was going to be like a proper hard night. He's meant to be in juvie. I was too old. I was like 26. Um, he was going to be 17. And he was going to be a proper little thug. And so I shaved all my hair off. And because I really liked the script. I was like, this script's amazing. I'm going to take a risk. Shaved all my hair off. Turned up in like a, a wife beater, trackies. And um, there was an actor that I won't say who it is, but someone recognisable, someone's son, actually. Um, and he came out of the room. And as I was going in, the door was like, he held the door open for me. And um, I shoulder barged him and like stormed through the door in character. And the casting and all that lot were looking at me like, what the fuck? And I, from the point I walked in through that door, I didn't, I was just a complete asshole. Like I was the character, 100%. Um, and it was only when I turned up on set and I spoke like I do that the director was like, what? Like, I, I just, just <laughs> went in there 100%. Um, so you did get it. I mean, can you imagine doing that and you didn't yeah. get it? I and mean, that's amazing that you did get it. Yeah. And they had no idea you were who you were. You'd literally done it in character. The, yeah. the little method acting way. That's really cool, man. Exactly. I, awesome. I was sick of getting cast as Northerners um, because of Northern so and I just thought, this part is so against type and I'm just never going to get it if I go in there as myself. So I just... It's like Johnny Lee Miller in uh, Train Spotting. They didn't know that he wasn't Scottish until the rap party and he started really? speaking in his in his Southern accent and they were just like, what the fuck? Because he, his right. accent, he was so insecure about playing alongside... I thought Ewan McGregor wasn't Ewan McGregor, but he was like, all these Scots. And he was like, fucking hell, I'm not... They'll, they'll take me for a ride. They'll never, they'll never believe me as being Scottish. He's like, right, from the audition to, to the fucking... To, the rap, he was Glaswegian, and he obviously nailed it. He smashed it. Uh, got to do what you got to do, right? Got to do, do, do what you got to do. Steve, I asked quickly. Just, I know Elliot, you probably have questions. Steve, what is like? Because we, I already have like dozens of like oh so nears, and you may not want to talk about it, but like, what is your biggest oh so near that still kind of winds you up? Of, of a role that you wanted. There are just so many to. I mean, I I, oh, right, I, okay. I, I literally have forgotten. One, one one I do remember was um, which you guys probably won't remember. There was a thing called Sharp's Rifles. Do you, do you know that was Sean Bean? Sharp, yeah, yeah, Sharp, yeah. yeah. I literally went for that audition, and um, and I literally I'd, I'd learned the six pages of dialogue, all that. Da 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 da. Sat down. Uh, John Hubbard, how you doing, John? Great. I literally went into the first line, and the phone rang, and he said, "Sorry, Steve, I'm going to have to get it," and he said. Sorry, mate, the role's been accepted. <laughs> and, oh. and that was it. In the room. And I was going, oh, I didn't even get to do the audition. Because Sean Bean had got it. And obviously Sean Bean had... Actually, what happened, Paul McGann played that part first and he broke his leg. And uh, there oh, was, really? the, it was the recasting for that. That's right. So that's one that I remember. Oh, because I didn't even get to audition. I was literally sat in the seat, spotlight on, Bosch got stopped. And oh, fair. Yeah, Sean, 
John Bean's brilliant. And the rest is history. Do you know what I mean? Paul McGann must be gutted about that as well. Can you imagine? Yeah, he, broke, yeah. he was playing a football match, broke his leg. Oh, no. And then Sean took over. No, but yeah, no, no, so no. Many. I mean, I, I've been up for so many movies and I, I honestly can't even remember. It's it, it's perfect. Right. Do you know what I mean? At a certain mm. point. And most, yeah, of the time, yeah, yeah. most of the time, you know you're not going to get it anyway, but it's worth a shout, you know. Well, that's the thing. Mm. My girlfriend's always like, oh, you've got to be positive. You've got to, like, believe that you're going to get it. But actually, I think you've got to protect yourself sometimes and be like, yeah, just do it, get it done, see what happens. Obviously, put all the effort in and do it as well as you can, but, like, you've got to let it go the minute you finish the tape. Otherwise, it's a fine balance of the two. Oh, man. You know that it's a balance. Yeah. It's like, I know when I know when I'm not going to get it. I absolutely know. And people might say I'm being pessimistic, or I know when I'm not going to get it. I've never been surprised on that level when in my heart I've known I'm not right for the part or I'm not going to get it for whatever reason. Um, mm. However, I always, if, I, if I decide to go for it, if I cross the line where I'm going for it, you do your best. That's all you can do, you know. And there are mm. other points where you think, I've really got a chance here. It doesn't mean to say I'm going to get it, but I know I'm in with a shout. They're the ones that excite me. Mm -hmm. You get something. I did, so I just did Uncharted with um, Tom Holland. And, uh, and I oh, knew wow. that I had a chance of getting this part. It's, it's, it's one of the bad guys, but he's in it all the way through. It's a decent role, you know. And as soon as I read it, I thought, I actually have a chance of getting this. You know, there's so many big movies where you think, all right, I'll go for it. But I, I just know I'm, I'm going to be disappointed. But that was one where you really, yeah. I've got a chance. Do you know what I mean? And they are out there. That, that's what spurs you on and keeps you going, you know. That must have been a nice phone call when they rang you up and told you you've got that one. <laughs> that was amazing. But then it got pushed back because of COVID and all that stuff. And the directors changed. Mm. All this this tangle kind of happened. I thought oh, that's going to go away. And actually, it didn't go away. It did happen. But yeah, beautiful call. And it's, you've amazing. got that part. I've got that part. That's so cool. I'm in another big film. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it. that's, that's, a, big, I'm that's back. a big boy film as well. I mean, Tom Holland is probably the biggest movie star in the world at the moment. And that really? is, so Uncharted is, Uncharted is, I mean, they've been moaning about who's going to be doing that film since the fucking game came out, to be yeah. honest with you. Since since they made a, a video game into a movie, I think it was a, a horror movie or whatever, and people's, like, producers' minds just went, oh we don't need scripts we've got video games that people would just flock to it's genius and it's like it is it's i I'm, i personally can't wait for that that's really yeah, cool ho hopefully it does well i mean it's been going so long that mark Wahlberg was going to play sully the, the the lead character yeah 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 a decade's gone by now tom's playing he that. aged out basically yeah yeah, yeah. but still still kind of work but you never know how a film's going to do you know i mean it was a great experience i've seen the trailer it looks good you know but Spider-Man is so big and Tom's in Spider-Man. You just go, you don't know how those films will play out, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, what, what a blast and, and what, a, what an opportunity, you know? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, like, so not cool. to jinx it completely, but, like, that is, you know, it's one of those films you look at and go, there's a, there's a very good chance with that cast, with all the people involved, that it's going to do well. And I fucking hope, fingers crossed, that it does. Too, I mean, it, what a juggernaut. I mean, as well, we're talking about how you started on the peak. To be fair... It doesn't get any bigger than that, what you've just done. So, no, it doesn't. It, it feels a little bit like I'm back for, for I'm that back, last baby. Yeah. I'm back. I was in Las Vegas <laughs> and I'm back in the back. Don't lose Mate, you, never went, you never went anywhere, man. No, you, you've done so yeah, many. Yeah, man, good films. it was a vacation. I was just waiting for the role. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Matt are still waiting for those roles. <laughs> oh, just yeah, one. Baby. It's a it's weird game, though, isn't it? How are your careers going, guys? How's it all going? Are you, are you up on it? Is it COVID's obviously been really weird and, and put a spam in the works for everyone? I'll speak for Elliot. I think El, because he'll never say it himself. Elliot is, for me, genuinely, I think, the best, the best still unknown, like non household name actor about. For me, he's phenomenal wait, and wait, he wait. proves it in such a different array of movies that he does and you pick sometimes strange films that end up maybe the film isn't a, a, like a home run but you are so 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 good in them so different in everything you do to the point mate i think you're too different in things and people genuinely genuinely don't recognize you because you are so transformative in every role you do it's mad it's really 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 impressive but um, yeah, and this is why Matt is like, here, literally. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I paid you well. That bit like, is I... not going to be cut out. That bit is not going to be. Cut out. <laughs> We're going to walk up with that. Later. Later. 
um, but I think I think Elliot, you're sort of you're just you're as everyone is to an extent. But I think Elliot is sort of one away, one one sort of movie or one TV series away from um, people being like, "Have you seen this kid's backlog? Have you seen what he's done in the past and all the all the rest of it?" And he still looks so bloody young. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes it's a timing issue, isn't it? And it's just it literally is yeah. that thing that is right for you. And, yeah. you know, I mean, that's, you know, we talk, let's talk about destiny. That that might never happen. That might happen tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? That might take another five yeah. years. And, and in the acting game, you just never know. And you just got to keep doing what you're doing, doing it well. And I think um, if that is true, which I think it is, I haven't seen much of your work since since I last saw you, then, then it's definitely going to happen. I don't think you can be that kind of an actor and it not happen, if you see what I mean. It, it's a matter of odds. Uh. Hope yeah, so, I do really think so. I mean, yeah, I mean how do you feel about that, Elliot? Are you, is, does that do you recognise what he's saying? Is that is that fair? I, I mean, I love, I love uh, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> it's very, it's very um, no, it's amazing to hear that. Obviously, from another actor that I appreciate and look up to, and I feel like we're all just really fucking working hard and struggling, trying to as much as like we, you know, you can say those things about me, which is amazing, but. I, I, you know, we're all ducks on the water and our legs are going like this and we're trying to make it look smooth on top, you know. Um, I, I do, I try, I do try and be different in things. And I think, as Matt said, like sometimes actually pigeonhole yourself and make yourself a bit typecast is maybe sometimes a good thing because then people get to know you, they get to recognise you and they get to kind of go, oh, that's that guy, he does that well. Um, it's kind of like, if you look at Hugh Grant now, like, I've always thought he's an incredible actor and he got kind of, you know, he got known for playing a certain type of role and now he's having fun and he's playing all kinds of roles and people are like, holy shit, Hugh Grant's actually a really good actor. Um, maybe that's Matthew the McConaughey, dude. Matthew McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey was the yeah. butt of every single joke in Hollywood. Like genuinely, people on Family Guy just ripped the piss out of him for seasons and seasons. And he sat back being like, okay, well, listen, I've got abs. I'm making fucking money. And you'll all see one day when I decide to flip the switch, and mm. I, I decide, listen, I'm going to be, I'm going to be an actor now. I'll do whatever I want. But even if you look back at like ten things, how to do a guy in ten days, that's, he's not doing bad acting. It's a good movie. It's just the genre of what he's in. Do you know what I mean? And it's being able to separate the performance. Okay, you might think it's a bit of a slapstick movie, but like Steve Martin in Cheaper by the Dozen, for example, is brilliant. Still, it's just not an Academy acclaimed movie. But you can appreciate that that's um, it's still incredibly talented, but just not in the, you know, in the way that everyone likes to say, oh, isn't he amazing, sort of thing, you know. And that's that's it's the same. I don't know. Well, I, I think if it, you guys have not had the finding defining roles yet, then you, it's it's quite good in a way because you've got nothing to be measured by. You you're still waiting to catch that train in, in a sense. You know, it's um, you, you've not been um, pigeonholed or locked in. Or he does this kind of role. He does this kind because of, as soon as you have some kind of fame or, or recognition then that's when the, the locking in starts well he does that he does that let's move on let's find someone else who does you know mm. uh, so yeah hugh, mm. um, hugh grant he, he, he's always been a terrific actor he's brilliant in in those films um the early films four weddings etc and, and you can mm. he's now shown his versatility which is great he's in a he's in a situation where he can afford to do that and, and probably engineer that you know so hats off to him you know and for you do you I mean, obviously, you've had so many. You've done films and series and all kinds of things. What is there a particular, without you know, regardless of the project, but as a part, as a role, is there a role that stands out as kind of your favourite that you've most enjoyed playing? Um, I've I've had so many to be honest. I've, I've been really lucky. I know, I know that I've been kind of under the radar in, by the measure of Last of the Mohicans, but I've I've played I. I guess I'm 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 quite a versatile actor, which is something I've been able to explore, which people may not have seen, but but it's been great for me because that is why I, I went into it. So mm. I think one of the characters I really enjoyed playing was um, a character called Stevie in a gangster film called Face with Ray Winston and Robert Carlyle, um, because he uh, at the time they would say he had learning difficulties. Now probably they'd say he was autistic, and and you know with 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 um, things changing now. I would not have got to, to play that role, I think, but I was given a chance to play that. So that was an interesting role to explore, as, as well as being part of the gang with the gangsters, you know, and trying to marry that. How, how does that work? And how do you make that believable? Uh, played Rich and the Lion Art twice, and that's always a blast. You know, I love the swords and sandals things, the horses and all that stuff. Um, so there's, there's, I mean, there's loads, really. 
I've been really lucky. Um, th there's not like a part I would say I'd really like to, but anyway, look, I want to be a filmmaker, basically. Going back to what I said, you know, when I, when I achieved those three goals within like three years of leaving drama school, when, when I was watching Michael Mann, mate, for, interestingly, not Derek Jarman, because I was so much into acting, I was like, I wanted to be Edward II, kind of, this is it. But with Michael Mann, it was such a vast film that I had such a lot of time to watch him directing, basically, and create, and I thought, that's what I want to do. And that was a long time ago, but that's when I started writing, and that's what became more important to me than, than acting, you know? So, um, obviously, acting is, is the way I earn a living, but really, I'm a very frustrated filmmaker at heart and I've made a few short films and I've just made one now um, but that you know that's where I'm heading that's why I think that's why I'm not despondent in any sense people looking mm -hmm. at my career might go oh yeah you, you should be a bit disappointed because you, you had all that height at the beginning and did it but, but actually, I but don't that, think that's fair no, no, I think, you know what I mean mate, you've but had I, an amazing career that's no, very you're very humble inside for me I was going I, I didn't really want to be an actor anymore once I'd seen that once I'd seen what he did I was thinking well that's what I want to do maybe not on that scale but well, that's what I want to do. And that's what I, that's a journey that I've been mm. I've been writing for 30 years and um, making little experimental films and things like that. And and now I'm gearing up to try and do more of that, you know, mm. before I get too old. Well, that's a, that is exciting, man. And yeah, as you say, you um you you directed a short, it was like a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah, it was a, a three-day short, yeah. So it was about um it's, it's really strange. I didn't I I wrote I was in Budapest and I wrote this script because i was working with an actor called ben bat i don't know if you know ben but i literally turned around and looked at him. he looks just like vincent van gogh and i was going i have to write a film for you about vincent van gogh because he looks just like him and um and then i did and i sent it to him he says this is great and we yeah we made it um everyone worked for nothing it was one of those you know but um it, the production value looks pretty good the way we shot it in the studio and so yeah i'm looking forward to getting into the edit just after christmas uh, but it was nice to finally do something with the crew all my other films i've kind of just literally kick bollock scrambled let's get this together here's a camera da, 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 da. Werner herzog you know a famous quote of um it's a series of um setbacks and humiliations until you literally pick up a camera yourself and go and do it and i feel like i've just started that journey so that's exciting that's good. amazing and it was, so that is the first time that you've obviously you've written in the you've written for 30 years but was that the first time you'd actually directed something yeah. No, I've, I've directed about four short films, but that I've not put on IMDb. I've not, in, it, well, it wasn't for me, it wasn't a matter of, um, um, uh, that, that, wasn't the, that wasn't the goal. It was to learn my craft um, and all that stuff. So, so no, I've, and I've written 10 feature films. You know, I'm, I'm ready to go. Once I cross that line, I've got 10 feature films, five of which I think are really quite good that I, I want to make. You know, that's, that's what I've been doing basically for 30 years. In, nice. in, rather than sort of going, how can I get this role? Or I sort of not lost my ambition as an actor after Mohicans, but I, I kind of it kind of switched my head. But I think that's the only way I can describe that. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were talking about at the beginning of your career, Steve, and you were saying that like there was no IMDb and there was um, um people didn't have that same like track. There wasn't Instagram, all this kind of stuff. So nowadays. I, I, I'm always curious about people who were who were actively in the industry back then, in the sense that it's a bit of a, I don't know, uh, not a great thing, but I think it is a good thing. You could lie, cheat, and steal and hype yourself into rooms. Whereas nowadays, you can I can't say I'm 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 a pretty well known guy. You may not see my films, but and they go Instagram. You've got like a thousand followers. You know what, mate? And I go, well, yeah, you've caught me. Whereas back in the 90s or whenever, I don't know, even 2002, whatever, you could go, I have a, you recognize my face a little bit? And just because, I don't know, Steve, you have a recognizable face and you, and they, and you hype your way in and you, you know what I'm saying? You can social climb your career a bit and you can stronghold people mentally and they can, you can trick them into thinking you're a, uh, a more recognizable person than you are to get your start. Whereas now that's impossible. You have got to have that number behind you right. verifying yourself. Whereas you could, you could sort of, you could pretend a bit more and you could act, you could, you know, social, I don't know what I'm saying, but you, maybe you, I do, I do, I hear your point. Somewhere. You know what, there probably was a lot of, I, I don't have the personality to have done that, but, but I, I'm mm. sure there was a lot of that and there was no record following you around, there's no IMDB, there was nothing, you know, so then it was about probably yeah. getting an agent, getting you into the room or, or, or socialising or something like that, I guess. Mm. And now yeah. I see what you're saying, you're kind of marked and you, but yeah. You, you still have an opportunity to get the blue tick or to get to whatever it is you think you might need yeah. in, in a sense it's even more clearer 
And it, it doesn't make it any yeah. easier, but you go, oh, I see what the goal is. And when you aim at the target, you, you can get it. Or if, if that sure. is impossible, you've got to find a different way. You know, you've got to, you've got to make a film or you've got to uh, create yeah. a play or you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to do something, you know. The, the one thing that I've learned, in, in not, not with acting, I've been very lucky with acting, um, to have a sort of consistent career, but in terms of filmmaking and trying to get projects off the ground is you have to do it yourself. I was under the illusion for like 20 years thinking if I write a good enough script, someone's going to give me a million pounds and, and it'll get made. It will not get made. You know, you li literally have to do it yourself and find a way of doing it. That's what I've learned. It's taken, it's literally taken me 20 years for the penny to drop. You know, it's like, okay, let's do it. Then. You know, that's where I'm yeah. at. Um, so you have to you have to look at um, the time that you're in. This is your time. You have to you s see how much Instagram really does count. And if you don't think you can get what's what's required from you, Instagram wise, then do it a different way. But it's all about setting yeah. a target and then firing the arrow. And as soon as you've got a target, you, you've got a better chance of hitting. You know? mm. Or you, you can be like, I mean, like actors like George Mackay, who's smashing it at the moment, and he's our generation, and he doesn't have any social media. He barely uses his phone, and you're just like, oh, I wish, I, I wish, I yes, wish I that, could be like that. That, that sends, yeah. that makes him just like so much fucking cooler as well. Do you know what I mean? That's why George Mackay is just like sexy, cool, like sort of like avant-garde, incredibly talented movie star. Do you know what I mean? He's a movie star, end of the day, and I think that's like that's so much cooler. It's similar with Asa Butterfield, who I did a I did a very very small part in in a comedy a couple of years ago with him. And he was always, he was the boy in the striper dramas. He'd done, he'd done a few movies, well, he Ender's Game, he'd worked with Scorsese and all, all the rest of it, but he wasn't like a recognizable star necessarily. And I said to him on that set, and I was like, what, what have you got coming out? And he's like, I've shown this thing called Sex Education. And I sort of go, good luck, mate. It's that rubbish name. So good luck with that. And bosh, like literally we land back in the UK, the show comes out and he goes from X amount of followers to like millions overnight. And I guess, and I, I spoke to him about it. I was like, mate, what the hell? It's just a bit weird. He's like, yeah, because I've been acting since I was like seven. And now people are like coming up to me at bars being like, photo? And he's like, I'm sort of having like a sort of a shutter vision of being really, really, really famous because of, of do you know what I mean? Just because of inst the Instagram culture. And like, it, it, it's just, it's, it's madness. It's, it's difficult to keep up with. There is, but, there, there's no formula, is there? The, you know, there, there's, there's the two yeah. spectrum and which to, you know, one of the guys is doing is, is doing kind of what I suggested, do the opposite, but it doesn't even have to be the opposite. It just has to be something different or it has to be something generated from yourself. You know, if you're going to follow the herd and try and do it the Instagram way, then that's probably tired already. That's probably the wrong way to do it. You know, it's like, I agree. What, what I agree. Else, what, what's the new way? What, let, what, let me invent the new way. You know I mean? I think that's the way of thinking. Um, it, and obviously it's very, very difficult to do, but it's, but it, but it's doable. You just have to, sometimes you, like Einstein, you just, he, he just literally used to sit down and think and think and th the, the answers are there. We just, we, we live very busy lives. But, you know, the, 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 the bridges across to where we're trying to get, they are there somehow and you have to generate yourself. But first you have to have the idea. And it's usually not by convention, the conventional route or Instagram route or whatever. So it's, you know, that's, that adds an extra dimension to what we do, doesn't it? Just trying to work out that philosophy and work out how best to apply it for ourselves well, definitely, definitely i mean, I mean yeah. all you have to do is look at all three of us i mean obviously steve you've been doing you've been writing you've been directing you've been doing all these things and then matt you've been doing your youtube and your podcast and i've been doing my podcast of writing and everything else so like we're all kind of trying to sort of branch out and do different things because then you're covering more bases and hoping that you know if one of those things fails the other one will succeed it's it is um it's a game of luck isn't it i think there's a lot of luck involved a lot of luck but also there's um um in trying those different things you know there's you're expressing yourself so it's about the journey as well isn't it we're always thinking about the destination i want to be famous or i want to be rich i want to buy a house i want to we all have a destination in our mind but really it's about the journey and, and the ups and downs and the getting through that and trying to make that enjoyable or creative or interesting and um and by trying those different things, we're allowing ourselves to express ourselves artistically by YouTube or what, and, you know, have a look at Matt's thing. I'll see what he's doing, but that's whatever he's doing. It, that's Matt. That's him. It doesn't get any closer than what he's doing there. Cause that's really him. Cause anything in an audition is what other people are requiring of him. Do you know what I mean? So I love these new outlets where, yeah. you know, when, when, as soon as I saw Instagram and I, cause I couldn't get my head around it. I was going, what you're sending photographs to each other. And someone I knew sent a photograph and then they got, 
some likes by people that I knew I was going, oh, it's a good way to communicate. But when I saw that you could make a film for, for what at that time was one minute, of, that to me was like filmmaking. It's like, I can make a film. So I just made loads of silly films, mm. you know what I mean? Because I don't want to send a picture of my coffee or, or my breakfast or whatever. I thought, I can make fucking films and potentially people can see that. And even if they don't, yeah. I'm expressing like the comedy side of me that I don't really get to do, you know, when I'm, when I'm acting in serious movies or whatever. So mm-hmm. it's a great outlet and it can be used as a tool for your career. It's just working out how it would work best for oneself. Mm. Get on the TikTok. Me and, me and Matt are far too old to be on there, but we're <laughs> trying to navigate it and um, get a few followers on there. And, you know, because it's a sneaky way of, as you say, making little videos, sharing your personality and then like, you know, kind of selling your career in a way and, and putting it out there for people to see. It absolutely is. And I, the only reason I haven't done that is I have tried and I don't understand it. It was like, I, it took me, it's so <laughs> difficult. It took me, isn't it's it? So why difficult. is it so difficult? Instagram. Why, why is it so like deliberately obtuse? They, they are deliberately confusing. But now I see these like 15 year olds doing their like TikTok. Like, and I'm just thinking like, this is very, very complicated that you're this good at this. Like I cannot fucking get on board with this. Like, and I am someone who I, I like m- more so than L. I'm tr- I'm really trying to like really figure it out, and I'm like, I, I can't, I can't get my head around this. Do you know what I mean? I just, it's, I will, I will continue and to pursue that, it, seeing as I have like four. Just, you know, but. Is that the technical side? Because I, the content I could come yeah. up on a minute by minute basis. But yeah, yeah. The oh, con- content can't get, can't get me around it. Yeah, no, the the content is 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 very very it, that comes to me dime a dozen constantly. And actually, before I had my TikTok account. I would drive to my day job and do these little characters to myself and think to myself for, for about five or seven years, I've been doing it. Firstly, not having the confidence to put it out on the internet and being judged by it. But then there's an element of, <clears throat> you know, getting, as you get older, being just more confident. It's such a cliche, but it is. And you're just a bit like, I have really, I have about 11 friends and everyone else is just sort of, if you're going to say stupid, nasty things, say nasty things, but they probably won't. They probably won't say nasty things. They'll just ignore you or whatever. And it's like, no one gives a shit about what you're doing with your life pretty much, mate. It's just sort of, no one, no one really cares. You're not that important. Speaking about myself here. So just put out your fucking content. And if you want, if you, if you enjoy doing it and I do do it like with your, with your videos, it's, it is in its purest form, a bit of filmmaking. And that is essentially what we are building towards. So why wouldn't you do it? I think like, James Dean, there's so many photos of James Dean because he fucking loves having photos taken of him. If he was in the Instagram era, trust me, make no mistake, he'd be doing everything, you know? Whereas we have all these things on our phones and we should use them. And it's, I think it's, it's, I would, insecurity shouldn't be a reason why, why I don't use it, I guess. No, I think you're right. I say go for it. You know, I think you're already doing it. Yeah. Continue doing it and do it bigger. Do it better, you know, just yeah. do, do it more. Don't be, uh, don't hold back. Don't half do it. Don't half do anything, you know I mean? Mm. Just, if that's what you're doing, if you're going in that direction, really go for it, you know. Make it the funniest, biggest thing you can make. Why not? Yeah. You're ridiculous. Exactly. Well, we, we've talked about, obviously, you working a lot and having all these credits, but what, I mean, obviously, the writing and the directing and all those other things, but are there, you know, I struggle with the downtime, and I know you do as well, Matt. Do you do you have coping mechanisms to kind of keep yourself sane while you're waiting for the phone to ring? Um, um, as a, as a father now, no, your 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 time is taken up. You know that you don't have to worry about that. But when you're a, a single young man, uh, for me it was boxing. I got I got into boxing early, and I and I wanted to learn about boxing, and I spent my time doing that. I had uh, music. I learned my learned the guitar and wrote songs and um, and and writing. So I had three things really. So I wasn't, I, I was never, I wouldn't say I struggled with it. You know, I, I think it's very important to have, I think it's a really good point to make because some people might have to engineer something. They might have to manufacture it and because you do need something and, and maybe it's important to do something that's not connected to the industry. You know, like my writing is very connected to it, but boxing just isn't. So it's having that divide and that leap, that separation, that's a genuine interest is really helpful because really that's meditative isn't it whatever it is if you're doing yoga or sprinting or boxing or swimming whatever it be you're actually with yourself even in a team game you know it's, it's about it's about um rebooting i think and even if you're thinking about the shopping or thinking about your family or thinking about what what needs working out or even writing something in your head or, you know you need that, that time alone 
So you do need to find something. So I'd urge young actors to know that, that you can't be acting 100% because you need to refresh and you need something else. Step across, do something else in a different lane and then come back refreshed for the acting. So, um, I mean, do you still struggle with it? Do you still find this? I mean, you've got this now, which is probably taking up the majority of your time, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, obviously for everyone, the last couple of years has been a bit rough. I mean, we, um, I mean, to be honest, like I, the last time I did a film that was like a feature or a series or whatever, and um, something that wasn't a short film, the last time I worked was November 2019. So it's over two years ago. Um, and I just, I, I told you before, I'd just been filming on a series. And so that, that literally came in November. So it was bang on two years where I hadn't worked. So, you know, this doing this podcast and doing the writing and doing all the other little bits and bobs has been very important. Um, but I do think, I don't know if you guys agree with this, but I think the longer you are an actor, the thicker your skin gets and the more used to kind of, you know, finding your way and, and doing what you need to do in between those times, it kind of becomes second nature anyway. You, you kind of get used to it. Um, so yeah I mean I've definitely got I mean when I started I was going insane <laughs> when I wasn't working but now I kind of I accept it I move on and I look forward to you know what the next job will be I was just going to say one of the reasons is probably because we we associate so closely with ourselves don't we and our self-esteem whether we're working or not because when you're an actor you're you're the business aren't you you're the thing uh, you don't you don't have this inanimate thing that you're selling or it's you and so you feel rejected and unwanted and all the rest of it and it's really hard to separate that from your self-esteem and, and take that blow and go, hang about, they don't want me, I'm not needed, or, you know, that's why you have to generate things yourself a lot of the time. But um, but you really should se- learn to separate that. I learned to separate that quite early on, I thought. I thought, this is not a personal thing. Mm. This is uh, this is me as an actor. I'm not required right now. So that means I have lots of time to do this. I might not be earning any money. I might be skint or whatever, but I'll be at least enjoying myself being creative in a different way, you know, a way that... Um, is valuable to me, uh, and 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 I think young actors should learn that as soon as possible. That it's it's so it's so easy to say not to take the rejection personally and so difficult to do, but I think it's essential. Yeah, I think that idea of of like the you are you are what is being rejected. Fine, yes, that's very true. But I've sometimes watched something that I was like, I was perfect for that role, and I've gone and watched the film, and um, I've gone. No, 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 no. That's they fucking smashed that casting wise. Brilliant. But I can't see that because I can't see the bigger picture. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm all about me. Whereas actually I watch the film and I go, yeah, no, nah, because they've got, I mean, the other guy looks just like me. So they can't have two people, whatever, you know, it, 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 it works for a reason. I watch show like Succession and I can imagine people who audition for Succession being like, oh, I should have been in that, but it's the chemistry is perfect. You know, their, their screen test would have been perfect. And that's why it works. The other actor is probably as talented, as good looking, whatever, but just not, doesn't work with Jeremy Strong as well as the other guy. Do you know what I mean? It's it's so out of our hands and we still try and control it. And it's it's silly. But, but L, you, the reason why I think you take it so difficult is because similar to Steve, you also, okay, it wasn't Last of the Mohicans, but you did go straight into Hollyoaks. You were able to buy yourself a flat off the back of it. Then you got, you were the one in a million to go from Hollyoaks at the time to a, you know, BAFTA nominated movie. You did have dizzying heights at a very young age as well. They weren't as dizzying as Steve, but like you, you had a lot very early on. So there's no, there's, I understand why you're like 24, 25 year old time. You struggled with it because you're like, well, I'm a hit machine. What, why am I not? Why am I not hitting? No, I mean, that's, listen, you, 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 you were doing well. You <laughs> the hit machine, like uh, Beaver in 2007. But, I mean, that's that's a really good point. And so sometimes you, you might feel, Elliot, <clears throat> if that was your beginning foundation, let's say, is you might feel at times like you're not matching it or whatever, and that's that's adding pressure onto your yeah. shoulders where it, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time before you have that next flare up and, and it leads to something else, something consistent. I, I know how you feel when, when you're, it's like you're going between valleys. I mean, there's a bit of a mountain, that's there's another valley and then you and, and there's a real pattern that emerges, you know, um, but it, it's a matter of time. And, and it's about, I think it's about finding that other other um, thing that, um, you know, for your, uh, your own sort of peace of mind that is not acting and it's something that you can go to, to refuel, but coming back to the acting, you'll be stronger to, to find those roles, but you can't make them happen. Uh, uh, you know, as Matt just said, you can't, 
you can't control it it's out of our hands so the, the essential thing to realize is that that we, we we simply cannot control it and that it's okay if we don't get that job that we were perfect for and we really wanted it's okay i've always been, I'm, I'm not saying i've always been okay i guess for the last 25 years i've been okay with that i, I realized it was essential very early on mm. uh, and i can go for something that i really want i might be disappointed for a day and that's it I, I'll, I'll forget about it next week you know but that might be an urgent experience thing that i'm talking about mm. yeah i think definitely it comes with it comes with experience doesn't it i feel like it's you know i used to come out of an audition i'd still be mumbling the lines like some sort of mentalist and <laughs> and now you kind of just you walk out and you go well that's done now and you forget about it um i mean it we were talking about tapes and um and you know the difference between going in and doing tapes stuff i when they started doing loads of tapes i just thought this is a waste of time they're going to be given a mountain of these tapes are they even going to bother watching them and for the first like couple of years when they started doing that i didn't get any jobs through tapes i was like this is pointless and um i mean the the most recent example the job that i've just done um when i got the tape from i was like this is a tiny part i'm not really i'm not really into it i'll just do it quickly whatever and um ended up doing the tape forgetting about it it was like a month later and then they rang me up and then i got i got offered a different role and it was a bigger role so you're just like you never know like when you do a tape you might not necessarily be getting that role you might be just oh that guy was good when he did that we'll call him back in for this or next time round or it's such a it's such a strange system isn't it it's, but... it's, it's, it's sort of um it, it's it's like an invisible world isn't it you can't it's not it's not there for you to touch but um the tape world does does work it does exist because like you i had no luck for about two years and then i started getting things from tapes and i was going and you, you need that one job to to actually yeah. realize that they're not being chucked in a in a pile in the corner you know there it actually does work i've, I've got i mean mm. especially the industry's changed a lot now hasn't it because of covid as well um i think there'll be a lot more self-tapes and a lot less auditions and in the room meetings and things like that i think people have also looking at overheads and how how much cheaper it is for everyone involved rather than going into town and yeah. or them the overheads of their extortionate you know bills that they have to pay for the places in soho and all the rest of it it, it might be um it might be more beneficial for everyone in a sense even though there's nothing mm. like being in the room and all that stuff even though it's more nerve-wracking but the tape thing does work. You gotta have faith in it. So it's like anything, isn't it? You've really got to, you give, if you're gonna give your best, you give your best. But you've really got to have faith that that's going to the right place. And if you don't get it, it really doesn't matter. You know, it's a film, yeah. TV, you know, it's a little bit of destiny that pinged off here, changed there. It really doesn't matter, I don't think. Which is harder when you're a younger man and you're trying to carve the career and you're trying to make the mark. And you, because then the building, the structure of the career is really important, isn't it? It's um, mm -hmm. So maybe, again, I'm talking with experience. Maybe I've got a little more relaxed with that and going, oh, it'll be okay. You know, maybe you're going, no, I'm going to fight for this because I, I really want that part, you know. So um, I might be talking with, with, with Sage kind of wisdom, but actually that is not needed when you're younger, you know. Yeah, I think um, sometimes the greenness, actually being inexperienced, you go in balls to the wall and you end up getting something because of that forced confidence that you don't, haven't earned you just go in and then you end up getting something because you you've gone and there was such gusto that are uh, fair play <laughs> you just I never know do you um, there's no formula therefore don't try and work out the formula just do your best and that's it you know mm -hmm. there is no formula there is no formula um i was just thinking then there was something i was going to say that was fascinating and i forgot what it was now <laughs> i don't know um no so I mean, obviously, you. How how long have you been? When when did you? Well, not without you know giving away age and and you know how long you've been doing this, but you've been doing this a long time now, and I noticed you've got over sixty credits, which is insane. Like that, to you now, does that feel a bit surreal? It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. If I if I revert to my childhood self, then yes, I'd be. That's exactly what I wanted. So. That, that's probably why I'm quite satisfied with my career. I really, and I mean this genuinely, I do not want to be famous. I avoided going for TV series throughout the 90s and the, and the noughties because I didn't want to be in any long running show because I knew that that would make me sort of well known and then I would be that character and all the rest of it. I've had quite a varied career doing some brilliant films, some shit films, some, some interesting TV work, do you see what I mean? And a bit of theatre. So, um, but to look back on it, you go, yeah, 
that's actually what I set out to do. I wanted, I wanted that kind of career. And I started, my first speaking role was in 1981. So I've been doing it like 40 years. It's a long time. They came to our school and I did this little audition. I got it. And so I, so I, I got drops of experience there. I went to a, a high school that um, concentrated on acting, dancing and drama, uh, musicals, things like that. So I jumped in that, did all that, years of that before drama school, then drama school and started working. So I, I guess I'm lucky in that I, I realized at a young age that I wanted to be an actor. You know, when I was, I did a school play. It was probably the same for a lot of people. Got a bit of a buzz and thought I'll do that. Mm. Not many other options as well and all that, but genuinely. Mm. Wow. But I mean, you look like you've been drinking from the elixir of youth. I don't understand how you can have been doing it for 40 years. Plus that's mad. That is mad. I mean, I was 13 when I started. I was 13, but, but yeah. But thank you for that. I'll take that. <laughs> but then if you look at the people that you've worked with, I mean, some of them big hitters. I mean, the fact that you were in Sleepy Hollow, which is obviously Tim Burton. And and what's the experience like working with someone like that? I mean, he's like one of the biggest directors who ever existed. Just amazing. And he's and he's so lovely. He's such a lovely guy. Um, he, I, I occasionally bump into him, actually, since doing that film. He'll be like walking around Hampstead or wherever and like, oh, how are, are you, you following him around? <laughs> <laughs> Basically after another part, yeah. One time I bumped into him, he had, he had four bags of blood. I didn't ask, just, you know, whatever. He's said, that's Tim Burton, isn't it? I'm sure, I hope it was for a movie. But, um, probably, not. probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably not, poor muse. Um, brilliant, he's Tim Burton, isn't he? So everything, he has this... Who else creates a world like that with those studios and sets? Honestly, when we walked into the forest for Sleepy Hollow, it was it was a hangar. It was it was a, they'd rebuilt a forest, and and I mean as far as the eye could see, planted trees that just looked like a forest. And you go sort of going, well, why don't we just shoot it in the forest? <laughs> it, looked, it looked more like a forest than a forest. And Christopher Walken's there with his fucking teeth in and all that, and it's it's just surreal. Of course, it's surreal. You're, I'm in a Tim Burton movie, and it's just it's mad. And then you watch it, and it was a really cool movie as well. And I watched it again recently, and it's, it's still it's still a good movie, you know. Um, oh, it's a good movie. Sleepy Hollow is a good movie. It's a scary movie, man. It's scary and funny in bits. Yeah. Which when I was younger, when I first watched it, I was like, "This is this is just an out and out horror movie." It's not. It's like it's it's got bits in it, which is like funny. I think that's oh, good, yeah, got that edge to it. Gets the humor in there, some you know somehow. But um, so working with that, you, someone like that, fantastic, and Johnny Depp, you know, who's, who, was, who was amazing. He's great in that movie. Um, yeah, it's just surreal. It is surreal. There's, there's no two ways about it. You, 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 you're doing your lines and that, and you, you're, you're trying to do your acting and be in character and all that, but you're just going, that's Johnny Depp. I'm speaking to Johnny Depp. <laughs> it never goes away, and I don't think that goes away for anyone. I don't care no. what people say. That's Johnny Depp. Look at him. He's looking at me. I once, I once went to the theatre... And I was watching, I can't remember, it's like a charity thing. I was watching a ballet or something. And, and I turned around and the queen, I'm not joking, the queen was behind me, two bodyguards. And I, and, I, and I looked and she looked at me. And there's just something weird about that moment when you go, I've, I've got eye contact with the queen. She's not yeah. seeing anything else in the world apart from me, right? And me, her. It's that kind of vibe <laughs> with those big actors. <laughs> You're just looking at them going, that's Johnny Depp. He's looking back. It's my turn to speak. Don't fuck up your line and get out. <laughs> that's as bad as yeah. his last years he gets me <laughs> whereas if yeah, it's not it Johnny Depp, if it's not Johnny Depp you're fine you know you're all brilliant acting you know raging sweating swearing uh, Johnny Depp it's a little bit different isn't it with those people I did I, I was in I, I did Ellie who you you've worked with um you Ellie recently you did fucking uh, the big boys you did uh oh, what's his name? No. fucking Michael Michael Caine Michael Caine yeah Ooh. doesn't get any bigger yeah. i yeah i had a scene with michael kane in it i mean i wasn't a big part of the film in total but like i had a dialogue scene with michael kane <laughs> and um yeah the, lucky i mean luckily um when we shot that they were running behind and um i was sitting in the green room and he came in because they you know they were an hour and a half behind or something and he came in and he said oh you know he was bored so he'd come in and chat and i was like okay he sits down and then i end up having a chat with him for like an hour and a half before we shoot the scene so that kind of that really helped because i think if the first moment i'd seen him was when he was staring back at me yeah. and doing alliance i probably would have self-combust but um <laughs> yeah it is one of those weird ones isn't it 
But you did. I, I mean, know, luckily you had that, you had that hour to kind of settle down. And but but you. Yeah. But, I mean, even when you're acting with him, you must have been thinking, "I'm doing the same with Michael Caine." You can't stop yeah. that little monitor from happening, can you? Well, we uh, shake hands at the beginning of the scene, and I'm like, when we did it, I was like, "I'm touching Michael Caine." <laughs> <laughs> Someone's let me and paid me to touch Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> oh, it is. It's just weird because you've been watching yeah. that guy since you were a kid. So it's, yeah. it's been like you know him, but you don't know him. It's really, it's I, a really odd place to I be. I told him my favorite film as a kid was The Muppets Christmas Carol. And I think he was probably a little bit disappointed that that was out of all the films I could have chosen. To oh, well, I, I, I second that. Uh, it's a brilliant movie. What a banger. Oh, my God. <laughs> So who kicks Kermit? There's someone, one of them sat on a step and someone just walks out and kicks Kermit right off <laughs> the step. Blinded. But yeah, he was probably uh, he was expecting Alfie or, or Italian job or something. Yeah, like seeing both of you guys, because I haven't, I mean, I've seen Matt occasionally, but obviously I haven't seen you, Stephen, for, yeah, as we say, six years. Um, so thanks, yeah. man. I appreciate you coming on here. Yeah, really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, Steve, it was so nice to speak to you again. Mate, also, I just wanted to uh, address quickly, because I've always found it very funny that I played your son in that movie, and at no point does the film address why you're this burly northerner and I'm this just absolute ice cream of a, of a child. <laughs> and they just go, don't fucking buy it, leave it alone, who cares? It's good. Leave it. It's good. I had such fun doing uh, it. Film. Always... That, that, that film was so, so much fun doing it, but I, I, I only ever got to see it. Like on my phone, Jim, director, sent it yeah. to me. It was, I was so busy. It was unfortunately I was doing something else and I just had to really zip through it. So I've never really seen it or, or appreciated it. I mean, did you guys enjoy it? Is it a good film? Did we create something good? Is it all right? I think it was monstrously missed out. Like it, because it didn't get a release. Yeah. It just it got completely did it left not? behind. Oh, did it not really. I mean, a couple of screens and then it was on Sky for a bit, but... I'll send you, a, I've, I've got a copy of it. I'll send it to you so right, you can yeah, see it properly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just for the audience who don't know what we're talking about, that um, we did a film called Beautiful Devils, which was basically a modern day uh, retelling of a fellow, loosely based. Um, and yeah, we were all kind of, you know, it was a good, I mean, that was a fun job, wasn't it? It was just a really nice cast and crew and, it was quite and, a um, was very fun memories. It just seemed to happen, didn't it? Suddenly it was, suddenly we were in the middle of it filming it and, um, and yes, Matt, yeah, um, father and son, completely different worlds. I'll, that's why I want to see it. I, mean, I, wanna, I didn't see those kind of things, you know, to capture it. I was just looking at the overall thing, but um, I do want to see it. Yeah, yeah. It was good. Well, yeah, Matt, cool. it's, like, it's like you say, um, when you were talking about, you know, you get casting, you don't know if you're going to get it because, you know, the person in it playing your dad or your, the son, they might not look alike. They might not be the right actor. Oh, yeah. Something, something went very wrong there, but then also very right. The fact well, that the only thing that went right film. was that... <laughs> Oh, well, Steve, Steve's a big lad. I'm, you know, a beanpole and about 6'2". So, and I had hair down to my shoulders. So mm. they were like, well, you're, supposed, you're playing a bit of a weirdo and, you know, your dad's tall. You barely say anything in the movies. They won't know that your accent's not Northern. Fuck it. Let's whack him in there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Nobody, was, nobody, that, wrote that, in. nobody wrote in and questioned it, did they? No, yeah, no, no one's going, oh, no, what is going on? It's not because no one saw it, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Unfortunately, so we, we got, more, we got done. Last of the Mohicans for a film that doesn't get released. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, Steve, were you hoping that Beautiful Devils was going to be the one that overtook uh, last that was week? Yeah. I thought I was back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, mate. Uh, I didn't want to. Well, there's always Uncharted. <laughs> there's always Uncharted. That's it, mate. Yes. February 18th. Yeah. February 18th. Well, what I'll Have do is I'll release this just so I can ride that fucking wave of Uncharted yeah. as well. I'll release <laughs> this around that time. Yeah. This is an actor. Who who <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah, Tom Holland. Definitely, definitely. Not Mark Wahlberg. Uh, Steve Waddington. Can I, um, can I finish this on a on a on a hopefully a an amusing and not offensive note? Um, I want to ask if there's a moment in your career that you can share with us that was utterly humiliating. Just a, one of those stories where you know you're naked on stage and forgotten your lines type scenario. So many. Um, I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you one that happened the last last month, about two months ago. But only if once, because I, I can't. This is basically an anecdote, isn't it? And I, you've disguised it and you, you've not said, tell me an anecdote. And I cannot tell anecdotes 
there's something in my brain. So when I finish and when I go ba bum, you've both got to sing with me, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Okay. When I hear the bum. Okay. okay. I was working with Gary Oldman, who I've seen you work with Gary Oldman, right? Oh, he's dropped something there. I think you yeah, yeah. dropped something. <laughs> <laughs> I was working oh, Gary. with Gary Oldman. <laughs> But you've just done something with him, haven't you? I just saw a photograph of you. I looked you up and did, there's you and Gary. Uh, did, yeah, yeah. I just did that so I could mention the fact that I'd worked with him as well. <laughs> no, you carry on. You carry on. Gary Oldman. Oh, so I'm doing this thing right now called Slow Horses, which is about MI5. And they're really, it, it's the sort of antidote to James Bond. They're really, really rubbish MI5 people. And Gary Oldman is, is, is in charge of us all. We've all fucked up. We've all done something wrong. So it's in the time of COVID. So we're all wearing a mask. And it's one of those scenes where we're all sat around a, a TV and we all chip in. You've seen them before, you know. So he chips in, he chips in, she chips in. Uh, but it's all through a mask because it's a rehearsal, yeah? It's like, oh, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all. And then Gary's got a big fuck off speech <laughs> through the mask. And then you take the mask off. <laughs> oh, just not rusty. <laughs> get, get ready for it. You take the masks off and we do it. And then everybody clear as a bell. Oh, I think it's this. Oh, I think it's that. Oh, I think it's that. Me. Because I fucked up my mind. Gary's got this massive fuck off speech to do. And at the end, he says, You might as well. I'm not taking your fucking mask off. Yes, <laughs> not. Yes, not. not. <laughs> that is because I'm dyslexic, mate. We didn't even get onto the dyslexia. I fucked up my mind. Um, dyslexia. Am I blaming dyslexia? Yes, oh, I am. fuck yeah. You've got to. You've got to. I'm, I'm actually just blaming being in a room with Gary Oldman. It'd been one of the first scenes and being just terrified. But I literally, it was um, it's Cantonese, whatever I came out with, it was not English, you know. <laughs> Everyone clear as a bell, but and he had to get through this massive speech, and I'd said this god awful line. And he just said, You might as well have a mask on. Oh, uh, burn from the Gary. Horrid, oh, man. Horrid. That's me. funny, man. That's perfect. That is perfect. It's been brilliant, guys. I, I've really, this is the first podcast yeah. I've ever done, by the way. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, really? It. Oh, it's an exclusive here, folks. You hear it first here. <laughs> Not Tom Holland, Steve Waddington, Little Letters. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. That's how you should uh, publicize it. First podcast. Don't worry, we're getting in next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get him in there. And I just want to give this opportunity just so that Matt, I know he was really hoping to when you mentioned Christopher Walken and he didn't chime in with his impression, but I know. Please. I know Matt. No, God, no, not doing it. No, 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 please, no, 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 no. Because I have me. tried it and I have failed. Please, come on, Matt. Let's. let's okay, see. okay. I'm going to sell this as this is a bad impression. Now, this is the idiot impression down the pub where he goes, Mike, you know, I got an idea. Fire is like the Tony. It's crazy. That's why you, you got to massage your hairs. It's, and that that is that works trash, for me, mate. Trash. That is that is not a chestnut. Yeah, you know I mean? it's, it's, that is beautiful, mate. Well done. It's, it's better than yeah, Tom. Uh, sorry to, yeah. Do you know what? I, why can't I just copy that? I, I can hear it. I can hear what it sounds like, but I can't do the impression. Why is Dogs that? Yeah, no, I mean, no, I need, 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 need to hear it. Oh, the oh, <laughs> Is that how your line came out the other day in front of Gary Oldman? <laughs> exactly like that. Oh man. oh man amazing man thank you so much it's been great and um yeah brilliant to see you both all right mate well thanks man i really appreciate it and um yeah stay in touch great to see you guys thank you so much all right boys great to see you steve great to see you, see you mate enjoyed it all good guys bye guys Cheers. Bye. Just <laughs> <on the earth>. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to our guest Stephen. uncharted is in cinemas from the 11th of february we're a small independent podcast and we are now part of Patreon. So if you'd like to get your episodes early amongst other bonuses, we would hugely appreciate your support and word of mouth. Thank you. It's a life and fail. 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 And you better come back next month to a life and fail. To a life and fail. We hope we carry a positive message to those of you starting out, those of you who are veterans in the industry, and those of you who are simply fascinated by film. For any questions, requests, please email lifeinfilmpodcast at googlemail.com. Thank you.